Chai. Chai. Hello and welcome to MI TV Primetime News. I am Teresa Adeyemi. Imo State Governor Ope Uzodim has assured Nigerians that Thanisha pays occasion by some of the reform policies of the renewed hope agenda of President Bolati Numbu will soon be over. Uzodima was speaking with State House correspondents after his meeting with President Bolati Numbu at the status in Abuja said with the implementation of the 2024 Appropriation Act, the ash impact of fuel subsidy removal and volatility of the forex exchange market will reduce. He expressed confidence that the takeoff of the new policies will give the nation a more robust economy and usher Nigerians into the benefit of the new vision of President Bolati Numbu. Governor Uzodim, however, disclosed that the state witnessed a peaceful Yuletide celebration devoid of insecurity challenges, adding that the state under its leadership achieved transformation that touched every sector of the economy. It will be the proper period for the entire region of Uguta Lake Orashi River to the Atlantic Ocean, working in two shifts, day and night. I'm happy you said in some places, by this time last two years, it was in all the places. So that today you are reporting pockets of two or three communities. It is not as if we have not managed insecurity very well, but in those communities that were at the epicenter of insecurity during the period under review, the fear is still resonating in our related development, the Deputy Minority Leader of the Senate. Sorry, we'll go on a quick break and after this break we'll be back. Roll up, roll up. Let's go. Welcome to DSTV Land. The most awesomest place to spend your holidays. Suffering, suck attack. There's loads to explore with something for everyone. Amazing. All the best shows. Wow. All the best buds. It is pretty great. So don't miss out and let the holiday fun begin. It's a blast. Only on DSTV. Hi guys, I am Kane Debankoli. Come with me as I take you to the homes of some lovely DSTV customers to find out what they enjoy watching during the holiday season. <laughs> Who hides the remote control? I mean, uh, what's the show you like watching over and over? There's actually a show called Slum King. So good to see you! Such a beautiful home. I learned on home makeover, on how to make your home look beautiful, modern. Do you cook? I, I Welcome back. In a related development, the Deputy Minority Leader of the Senate, Senator Olalere Uyewumi, says Nigerians will benefit from 2024 budget through the outcome of economic review programs established by the federal government. Addressing journalists, Senator Uyewumi explained that the 2024 budget was extracted from medium-term expenditure framework from 2024 to 2026 with various plans and government activities, looking at expected income and expected expenditure for three years. The lawmaker representing Oshu West Senatorial District made their session shortly after commissioning of 1.4 kilometers township project in Iwo, the headquarters of Iwo local government of Oshu State. The Senate also distributed operational equipment including 30 wheelchairs, 20 sewing machines, cash gift, and certificate of 150 pulses were into petty trading across 10 local government areas that makes Ocean West Senatorial District. The outcome of most of the uh, economic uh, review program of the government, I think Nigerians is going to benefit immensely from this budget. Ah, For the first time, suspended. the this guy expenditure on capital project oh. is about 9 billion, 9 trillion. This has happened last, maybe during the Obasanjo era. So, and if we look at the, the, the uh, debt surface, it reduced drastically because the idea of removing subsidy 
is giving us more money that we are using to offset most of the debt. Because the debt is almost choking the country into, into, into a serious economic crisis. We are uploading that and that's why it's giving us a better uh, relief to be able to face infrastructures. President Bola Tinumbo has announced the suspension of Minister of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Dr. Beta Edu, from office with immediate effect, in line with his promise to uphold the highest standards of integrity, transparency, and accountability in the management of the Commonwealth of Nigerians. The President also directed the Executive Chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, to conduct a thorough investigation into all suspects of the financial transaction involving the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, as well as one or more agencies there under. The suspended minister is hereby directed to hand over to the permanent secretary of the Federal Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Elevation, and she is further directed by the president to fully cooperate with the investigative authorities as they conduct their investigation. President Tinumbu tasks a panel that is headed by the coordinating minister of the economy and minister of finance to, among other functions, conduct a comprehensive diagnostic on the financial architecture and framework of the social investment programs with a view to conclusively reforming the relevant institutions and programs in a determined bid to eliminate all institutional frailties for the exclusive benefit of disadvantaged households and win back lost public confidence in the initiative. The Supreme Court on Monday dismissed the appeal by the People's Democratic Party and its candidate in the Benue governorship election, Titus Uba, coming after the governorship election petition tribunal and the Court of Appeal in Abuja had affirmed the election of High St. Alia as governor of Benue State. Not pleased with the judgment, Uba approached the Epes Court for redress of the proceedings the counsel for the applicant, Sebastian Honorable, a senior advocate of Nigeria, urged the court to allow the appeal, adding that the deputy governor of the state, Samuel Ode, was not sponsored by the All Progressive Congress. However, five-member panel of the Supreme Court led by John Okoro said issues raised in the appeal did not qualify as post-election matters. In resolving the dispute, the Supreme Court prevailed on the lawyer to the PDP and Mr. Titus Sebastian Honorable, a senior advocate of Nigeria, to withdraw the appeal, paving the way for its dismissal on Monday. In a related development, the Supreme Court has reserved judgment in the appointed state governorship election appeal to a date that will be communicated to parties. Justin John Okoro reserved the judgment after parties adopted their briefs of argument on Monday. The Court of Appeal Lagos had earlier affirmed the election of Francis Inwefuru as the duly elected governor of Airborne State. In a unanimous decision, the three member panel led Justice Jumai Sanke dismissed the appeal filed by Chukuma Odi of the People's Democratic Party. The party also resolved all the five issues raised against the appellant and dismissed the appeal full lacking in merit. Staying with judicial matters, Justice Olukayode Adeniyi of the Federal Capital Territory Court Abuja has awarded the sum of 100 million naira against the federal government in favor of the former governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Emefiele, for the violation of his right to personal liberty. The court also declared his prolonged detention without trial as a flagrant violation of his fundamental right. It also retained the federal government and its agent from rearresting or detaining him fairly without an order of court. The judgment was given in a fundamental human rights suit filed by the former CBN governor following his prolonged detention in the custody of the Department of State Services. The 20-foot Lagos State Annual Thanksgiving service and unbroken tradition since 2000 was held at a very busy and popular Tafar Bolivar Square in Lagos amidst Thanksgiving. Celebration to the Lord Jesus and expectation for a better year, 2024. At the event which had the immediate past governor of the state, Akimu Miyambada, in attendance, the state governor, Babaji Desonwolu, said his administration is dedicated to the successful implementation of a voter project to foster the robust growth of the state and ensure the well-being of its citizens. He said the year 2024 will be an important one for his administration in terms of enforcement of the various laws and regulations that have been crafted to safeguard the lives and property of residents of the state. 
The State Commissioner for Home Affairs, Ibrahim Layode, was full of thanks to God for the success recorded in the state during the outgoing year under Sawulu's administration. The chairman of the Lagos State Chapter of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Ken, Reverend Stephen Adigbita, said God is good to Lagos State and the state will continue to hold the annual Thanksgiving service to appreciate God for the continuous peace, growth and development in the state. Yes. None of you will be missing by the time we're doing the one for 2025 in Jesus' name. We'll all come back in 2025 with a lot of thanksgiving, with a lot of things that we can point to, that God has been enabled for us, and that Lagos, that we'll continue to pray for, will continue to meet and exceed our expectations. Nigeria will not fail. I don't want to turn this to another only or a charge or a scripture, but it's because that this is a unique opportunity for me to thank all of you and wish you well. We went to prayer. A certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought our masters much gain by two saying. 17. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the most high God wish you unto the way of salvation the message for this year is a message of hope it's a message of covenant of renewed hope and satisfaction the law will satisfy Nigeria the law will bless Nigeria the law will bless our president our people should continue to pray things will get better for us by the special grace of God all the prophecies of doom is not going to come to pass in Nigeria. God loves Nigeria and Nigeria will never become an abandoned project. Pray for the best for Nigeria, our country. We love the country. We love our state. And we know that God's hand is, is upon us. Irrespective of our challenges as a nation, God's hand is upon us. So we must not lose hope. Rather, we must keep up hope and let everybody do whatever needs to be done in order to advance the cause of our nation and of our state in particular.